Welcome to Venus Flytrap World. Last week I got five brand new subtropical sandies and this week two of them are flowering. So I went on to do a lot of research so I can come up with the best strategy of what to do when your sand dew flowers. I'm going to give you some specific facts about the flowering process and then I'll share with you what I'm going to do uh, for my specific plants and also some tips for you to decide what to do when your sand dew flowers. So here are some facts. Sand dews in general will lose some energy when they undergo the flowering process, which could slow down their growth. But this slowdown in the growth is not extreme, it's just very mild. It's not comparable to what Venus flytraps go through. So it is completely safe to leave those flower stalks in your plant and let your sand dew flower. Also, the vast majority of sand dews are actually self pollinating. This means that if you let your flower stems grow and develop flowers, those flowers will self pollinate. So you do not have to do anything to be able to extract seeds. And from each of those flower stems, you can potentially collect dozens of or hundreds of seeds, which can turn into sandus pretty quickly. Actually, it usually takes less than a year from you sowing the seed into obtaining a mature sandu. So it's actually extremely fast. So here are my recommendations. If you are interested in propagating your sandu, leave those flower stalks and those flower stalks will develop those flowers, then you can collect seeds and you can end up with tons of sandus, which is what I'm going to choose to do. But here is uh, the tricky part. You can let one of your flower stems develop, but if your sandu starts growing multiple flower stems, I wouldn't just let all of them grow because you'll be sucking in a lot of the energy that should be concentrated in your plant's, de your plant's development. So instead, just cut all the flower stems that you don't need and maybe keep only one. With one single flower stem, you should be able to collect plenty of seeds. I would also suggest that you do some research about the seed propagation process for your specific plant, as this process can change according to the specific species of Drosera. If you're not interested in propagating your sand dew, that is completely okay. In that case, I'll suggest to cut, cut all those flower stems as soon as you see them. The faster you do it, the better. If you do leave the flowers to develop, those flowers can on their own spread, spread all their seeds and you might end up with a lot of sand dews that you might not be looking for. I wasn't really planning to make this video this week, but my sand dews were flowering, so I thought, well, I have to jump into this opportunity. And if you're interested actually into learning more about sand dews, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear some of your suggestions, and in that way I can get some good ideas of things that you might like. If you think those tips were useful, I really appreciate it if you like this video. It helps us spread the word. Thank you for watching.